Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking the video. This is David Pendleton, and now we're going to talk about the back nine for the rookie division on the quarterback tournament. Extremely pumped to share the back nine with you. I mean, I just caught absolute fire by putting up a minus 17. So I really needed it because a minus 13 front nine on this account uh, was going to be close to making the cut, you know, on tier three. So the back nine definitely bailed me out. Got a lot of great shots to share with you. You know the drill at this point. If you're not a subscriber, please become one. You know, I would really appreciate it. Take just a second there to hit the thumbs up button and like the video. And if you appreciate the content that I provide every tournament, you can show me support. You can take, see a link to my PayPal in the comments or check out the description if you would like to become a member and also support Wildlife, which some of my donations go to for the membership. All right, let's go. Hole number one. Hole number one is going to be played 20% at max with our quarterback. Now, we do have a little bit of headwind, which I believe is the first time in this tournament we've had headwind on hole one. So you're going to see me here use one bar of top spin with no side spin. And then I back my target up just a little bit so that I can pull my rings properly. But again, 20% at max. Here we're taking a normal shot. We don't really need any overpower. We do get a perfect ball. And we're just laying up here on the fairway, up here in between the bunkers like normal. That's going to leave us for shot number two. Shot number two, I'm playing this one with this wind angle, 10% at max. As you can see here, I'm going max backspin, okay? Max back, one bar of right side spin. That's, that's max right side spin with the navigator. Here, I'm trying to find the funnel. As you can see, I've got the ball guideline sloping down into the hole, dead center, no offset. Perfect ball. And you're going to see it's, it just runs out of steam. It wants to go in, and it just stops right at the hole. So that's okay. Um, you know, we consider that one maybe a little bit unlucky. Maybe we need to push our target up just a little bit to get more of a downhill roll, but ultimately very close and a very good line. Now, hole number two, this hole has been really good to me in the tournament. I actually picked up a hole in one on the back nine on both accounts. Here's the biggest thing that I'm going to pause and tell you. Um, normally, we pull our rings, okay? So normally, we flip the screen around, and we have the wind arrow blowing north when we go to make our ring adjustment. You are not going to be able to do that on this shot. Well, you might be able to but the, the bushes and the tree are really gonna get in your way, all right? So we are gonna have to push our rings to get our shot to be accurate. So what we do is we make the wind angle blow directly south, and then we push our rings up to the top of the screen. So it's the complete opposite of what we normally do. But either way, here's your setup point. Three bars of right side spin, yellow ring on the rough. We are not leaving any room for a great right shot, so keep that in mind. Ball guideline slightly going through the pin, as you can see there. So you can see there, I tried to flip the screen around to pull the rings, but I just knew that it was going to get in my way. So now you can see the wind arrow blowing dead south, and I'm pushing my rings up towards the screen, but still counting my rings, very important. Perfect ball, and we get this thing to drop. We catch that funnel and the ball comes in really nice and smooth. And as you can see, it's dead center, hole in one. That brings us into this account here. This one, it was half a mile per hour wind more, but we're really doing the exact same setup. Yellow ring on the rough, ball guideline going through the pin, as you can see. Pushing our rings at 30% at minimum. Perfect ball. And again, dead center, hole in one. All right, that's going to bring us on to hole number three. Now, you know if you've been following me, hole number three has been my nemesis. I cannot hit perfect on shot number two. Well, this time I do, and we drop the albatross, finally. Okay, we're going to play the left-hand side because of the headwind, so we're going to take the much safer drive. Again, I'm backing my target up in headwind so that I can still adjust my rings properly. And again, this is going to be 10% at um, max distance. Both shots on this hole are going to be at 10%. You can see here I'm using quite a bit of overpower. And we're able to muscle that ball from fairway to fairway, which is going to leave us for shot number two. I'm sorry I cut off the yardage there, um, but I'm not playing any slider, just so anybody knows. 
The nice part about this one is we're getting dead tailwind. I'm sorry, dead headwind, which is a really nice way to approach an extra drop. So dead headwind or dead tailwind, I'll take those all day. Here you can see I've got the yellow ring on the rough. The ball guideline going slightly through the hole. I'm pulling this one 10% at max, which was about 1.2 rings. Again, just make sure, I'm sorry, I put 10% at mid. So just make sure that you check your own distance of your club. But here we clip the rough, no problem. Very smooth, dropping this one in, hit the pin for an albatross. Okay, that takes us on to hole number four. Hole number four, I'm getting really frustrated with. This one here is played 10% at mid. Uh, I want you to play at 0% at minimum, which is going to be a very small ring pull, okay? But you're going to see here that again, the 10% at mid, which is how we normally always play this hole, is giving me issues. We miss this in here, the left hand side. So we're pulling to the left, we miss to the left. Um, so we got to play that one, 0% at minimum distance. That's, that's really the only advice I can give you on hole number four. But I do like the spin adjustments. Keep the spin adjustments, okay? Hole five, 0% um, at mid-distance of the club. This one's nothing special. We can kind of just skip through this. That's about 1.1 rings and 2.5 mile per hour wind. A little baby right curl, and we knocked this ball up the fairway. Now you'll know that I've been using the Guardian and I've been using the max backspin one right spin approach. And because of the right spin, I kept coming up to the right of the hole. Well, here I'm kind of aiming in the same area as I normally do, okay, with no right side spin. And it's like, come on, seriously? Like this ball misses way to the left, but you know, that's okay. This is definitely a tough drop. Um, probably one of the harder drops in this tournament to get right. So we're taking this one as the eagle, and then we're just moving on to hole number six. Hole number six, uh, two different things happen to me. First count, um, I make it, you know. So we're doing the max top spin, two bars of right side spin with a Titan. You know, if you have lesser mile, extra mile, like maybe an extra mile six or seven, you know, you may want to pull out a berserker here. But just to give you a heads up, my opponent did make it with an extra mile seven and a Titan. Uh, but he was really going haywire with the OP. So, you know, a power four ball or even, like I said, again, a berserker would be a good option. Here I'm using full OP with half a ball of curl to the right. Now, I do hit a slight great left shot here, okay? But you're going to see that this ball is still okay. And we roll down, we roll down, we roll down, leaving us for a nice uh, wedge shot for an eagle. Now, like a bonehead, I missed this shot. I could not believe it. Um, it was just a bad, great right. So, you know, don't do not do something stupid like me. You got to hit this ball perfect and knock this thing in for the eagle. But here on this account, okay, I hit uh, a really bad, a great left shot on the drive with the full OP, and I clipped the rough and I rolled out. So if you're playing from up here, if the same thing happens, this shot's played 30% at max. And you're going to notice what I do here. This is very dangerous, but it's really the only way, in my opinion, to try to drop this shot from up here. You're going to notice I'm playing right on the sand line. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, then you just need to lay up and try to just, and just hit the birdie, all right? But for me, I was going for the eagle. I do pull this 30% at max. and uh, surprised myself that this ball goes into the hole, right? So isn't that how the game goes sometimes? Like a very easy wedge shot, I miss, but then something like that, that's a high degree of difficulty from that high up, the ball goes into the hole. Like sometimes the game just makes you really frustrated. Okay, this is hole number seven here. Now, I want you to notice that on this shot, I played this one one for one with the wind. So I'm gonna play this about 4.3 rings. No top spin, no back spin, one bar of left side spin. Notice how my white ring is dipping into the sand. Also notice that on this hole here, I'm leaving myself plenty of room, like from the bunker, right? So I'm, I'm playing this to the right hand side of the bunker. As you can see the ball guideline going through the hole. I just point that out because I'm playing again one for one and I'm not up on the sand line. 
on the other side and I've got the white ring here dipping into into the bunker this shot plays really nice no fear of sand the only thing that happens is I miss this one slightly to the right hand side which means I need to pull my rings more that's why I want you to add five percent elevation to it and play at twenty percent this is going to bring us on to hole number eight Hole number eight, the game is going to give us a uh, tailwind. So um, anytime I get tailwind or crosswind, I do play a more advanced shot, all right? Now keep in mind, I've already showed you in the qualifying round and in the video today for the front nine how to drop this eagle by playing a very safe drive. But um, if you want to gamble, you can really give yourself a chance to get onto the green. Now, this shot can be done with a Kingmaker, all right, as little as an extra mile six. And the only reason that I know that is because I posted this video a couple of days ago of this shot. And if you look at the comments, uh, people let me know they had, you know, success with it as little as an extra mile six. But I know that an extra mile six on a Titan is going to require you to play with overpower. If you're not comfortable with that, you know, if you hit a bad, great right shot, you could end up in the water. I just want to give that little caveat to this hole. But it's a tournament, and, you know, sometimes we just got to gamble. For me, this is no gamble with an extra mile eight. This is a very easy shot for me to execute. As you can see here, I'm going for a rough bump rollout. So yellow ring right here fully on the fairway with the ball guideline going through the rough and then onto the fairway. From here, it's a 10% pull at max. This shot does not require any overpower. It doesn't even require any right curl. You can use a little bit of right curl if you want to. That'll help you get on the green, but you just don't want to, you know, clip the sand or anything like that. So I just take this shot, and from there, that's an easy chip in with your wedge, okay? Now that's going to bring us on the hole number nine. Hole number nine, we also pick up an albatross. Here I'm using a kingmaker. That's just simply to reduce the wind on shot number two. You could easily play with a titan ball if you wanted to go that route. 10% elevation at max distance. Gonna have to go with a quite a bit of overpower here just to power this ball from fairway to fairway. But we make it there no problem. Shot number two, I'm gonna play this one one for one with the wind. Half the bar is side spin to the right. Going for the rough bump, of course. Three top, half right. Leaving the ball guideline through the hole a pretty good amount because of the headwind. Now, it's not a strong headwind push, but again, it's a long distance from the rough to the pin, so we need to account for that. One for one, this is going to be 1.9 rings pulled. Hey, this was a really great back nine. I hope you found it helpful. If you're not a subscriber, I hope that I've earned it. I hope that you do hit the subscribe button, and I hope that you hit the thumbs up button. You know, it would really mean a lot to me, both those things. And again, if you'd like to support the channel, check out the comments or check out the description. Let me know how you do. Good luck, everybody.